Presidential cabinet members call for a better long-term solution to fire problems in Montana. Does that protective fire gel really keep you from getting burned? Our reporter got close to the flames to find out. And an investigation is underway after disturbing video released of a teenage cheerleader physically forced to do the splits. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. Dennis Bragg has the night off. Summer Valley County residents evacuated due to the 34,000 acre Lolo Peak fire are back home tonight. Sheriff Steve Holton said earlier this evening that Ty Chute Lane north to West County Line Road had moved back to an evacuation warning status. Residents on the north side of Ty Chute Lane can gain permits for access at the fire information tent at Florence Farmer State Bank. This downgrade comes as two members of President Donald Trump's cabinet and two of Montana's congressional leaders toured that fire camp. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke praised the professionalism of firefighters and the other emergency teams who are coping with Montana's epic fire season. He wants to put firefighters out of a job by using better forest management to stop catastrophic fires every summer. And as Dennis Bragg reports now, his counterpart in the Forest Service feels exactly the same way. A week ago, the Lolo Peak fire was exploding in a wall of flame. Today, it was being refreshed by badly needed rain showers. But Zinke and U.S. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue are looking beyond this fire. Accompanied by Montana Congressman Steve Daines and Greg Gianforte, Perdue got his first look at a fire camp. The quartet's briefing was closed to the press, but some who attended tell me it was a frank discussion about not just fire management, but how the community has been stressed by yet another massive fire in the Bitterroot, something that's become an annual event. When we get to fight a fire, uh, the professionalism of our law enforcement, uh, the departments working together, the state, it all works well. We're going to make sure that the Department of Interior and the Department of Agriculture team, because we're all team members, work together. While Senator John Tester presses to solve the Forest Service's budget problems by changing the system so fires can be paid for like other natural disasters, Secretary Perdue would rather see a permanent budget change. I don't necessarily want emergency funding. I want ongoing funding. I want to say this is not about money. It's about management of our farms. While there was some discussion during the press briefing about the need for funding to keep fighting fires, all four men talked more about the issue of forest management getting ahead of fires so they don't happen in the future. So that's why we're here trying to determine how we can get ahead of this. I, if, uh, you know, I'm not from Montana, but I wouldn't want these kind of situations having to live with on a year in year out basis. And we don't want the people of Montana to either. If we don't address the litigation issue, the frivolous litigation issues from these extreme environmental groups, we're never going to get ahead of this curve. The leaders presented a united front on how to tackle the fire problem with preparation, discounting the idea that climate change is solely to blame. It remains to be seen how those details can be pulled together to satisfy all the diverse views on the wildfire issue. In Florence, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. The Missoula County Sheriff's Office issued new evacuation orders and warnings due to the Rice Ridge Fire near Sealy Lake. Two cabins are now under an evacuation order along Forest Service Road 17507. An evacuation warning has been issued for folks in the Cozy Corner Meadows area. There are 15 homes in that warning area. It also includes the Black Canyon Ranch. And we're tracking the very active conditions out there, plus that red flag warning in place until midnight for some areas of western Montana. Here is Aaron Yost joining us now with the latest on that. Aaron. And the biggest concern with those red flag warnings was the fact that we were dealing with thunderstorms, which equate to lightning and gusting erratic winds also associated with those thunderstorms. Uh, that's the reason that red flag warning has been in effect. Quieting down though nicely. This was Hamilton earlier today. First Security Bank ICAM uh, when we were dealing with a ton of haze. A lot of that starting to mix out. Believe it or not, our air quality is actually improving across western Montana. Still dealing with a couple of showers and storms across some of west central, mainly southwest Montana. That'll continue overnight tonight. But up next, we've got building high pressure, which will bring us back to the same old, same old that we've gotten used to. An update coming up. All right, Aaron, thank you. Firefighting costs continue to soar this week and with seven new fires breaking out in the northern Rockies region and multiple large fires still growing, that $127 million price tag will keep going up for weeks. The Lolo Peak fire, which as we mentioned is nearly 39,000 acres, 
has cost $26.5 million to fight, making it the most expensive fire in western Montana this season. And with about 1,200 personnel working the fire, that total is jumping about a million dollars per day. The Sunrise Fire burning above the lower Clark Fork Valley has cost more than $26 million. The good news here is that containment has now reached 57%. The Sapphire Complex remains the largest fire at nearly 39,000 acres. It's cost $26 million to fight as of this morning. Rice Ridge burning above Sealy has cost nearly $18 million to fight. And the Liberty Fire that's burning east of Arlee tops $11 million, while costs at the Myers Fire near Phillipsburg are nearly $20 million. For people whose property is in the path of one of these fires burning across western Montana, there are steps you can take to protect your home. MTN's Augusta McDonald visited the largest fire equipment store in western Montana, where they've been working overtime to keep landowners and companies well prepared in the face of fire. And one particular product has the potential to repel flames for up to 12 hours. One company stocks their shelves with equipment homeowners living in wilderness areas can use. It's been a crazy summer here at Axman where they're selling pumps and gel and hoses to people and organizations that are trying to protect property in the western Montana wildfires. Fire ice is one key ingredient to fireproofing anything from garden plants to roofing. Corey Kosky showed me how it works. Okay, so the first part, the first part of this demonstration, I'm going to show you that yes, this is a stick and it will burn. Fire ice turns from powder to gel when mixed with water. With fire ice on it, and as you can see, I mean, we can stand here all day long and it will not burn. And you can see up here where it's not on there. I had to try it out for myself. So you ready? Yep. Okay, so now I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move it in closer. So just tell me if it's getting too hot. You good? Good. Oh, a little hot. Yeah. So it will get warm, but that, you know, if, if you did that on your, thicker. if you did that on your bare skin, it oh. would literally just burn your finger completely off. Homeowners have a few different options to apply the gel. So this is a personal water container. Um, you just pressurize it with air compressor until it's in the green. And what Fire Ice has done is they've got a different nozzle that you could add onto it. And you fill this with water and you dump this nice little bottle in here. This is called the HDU wand, which works fabulous. Each bucket of fire ice, which is down below me, will cover 1,250 square feet once the nozzle is adjusted correctly. Or if you do own a pressure pump, this is their large inch and a half eductor. Fire ice is one of many ways homeowners can protect their property. Reporting in Missoula, I'm Augusta McDonald for MTN News. Augusta is brave. Well, for more than 100 years, Lowell Elementary School in Missoula has been a place of learning for students. Thanks to the Smart Schools 2020 bond, that building has a new lease on life. And as MTN's Eric Clemens reports, students aren't the only ones excited to check out the new school. Lowell School was one of the massive construction projects paid for by the Smart Schools 2020 bond. The old building has been completely redone with all new wiring, new technology standards, ADA compliance, and an entirely new north wing filled with open spaces, massive classrooms, and little nooks for students to work on various projects. But for some returning students, joy comes from what's been left the same. I love this, the gym because it still has the climbing wall and I, and I like the music room, but it's mostly empty. <laughs> Kaylee says she's excited to start second grade with Mrs. Owens. Yes, because she has a bean bag, she has wobbly seat. Kaylee's older sister, Susanna, also went to Lowell School. She left that school about 10 years ago and says she loves what's become of her alma mater. I'm really grateful of what the construction workers did for um, the students, and I'm very happy um, to see my sister Kaylee come to this school. Another former Lowell student shared a similar sentiment. Irene Hiller sat in the old brick building's classrooms from 1947 to 1955, when the school bell was still an actual bell. I think it is absolutely wonderful. I think it is awesome. I'm excited for the kids in this area with the modern technology they are going to have. And for any kids with butterflies in their bellies who don't want summer to end, take Kaylee's advice. If you're going into kindergarten, and you're going to a new school, don't be scared, it's pretty fun. 
There are still a few finishing touches to be added. Some walls need paneling and a few spots need a splash or two of paint, but crews will be working through the weekend to ensure everything is ready for school to begin on Monday. In Missoula, Eric Clements, MTN News. The next big projects are Russell School, Washington School and Willard Alternative High School. A new Cold Spring School is also on the way. Well, still ahead, a look at our local weather. We had a stormy day across western Montana with some fantastic rain. So what's next? Aaron has a look at our extended forecast in just